Hello and welcome to the Studio Roundtable on the CIO and CISO relationship. The big thing for me is making sure that the CISO is fully on board with the rest of the IT leadership team. So the CISO has got a unique role, which is risk focused. And at the risk of getting that kicking, everything the CISO does is by definition non-value add, right? And I, I can get a kicking on that, but we need to balance that with there's only so much funding available. and what the what our business customers always want is we want more of this we want to deliver that we need this we need that there's lots of exciting things we could do and we need to do for our customers so we've got to make sure we balance that against the risk management which is critical i think it's important for for transparency uh, between the two roles um, obviously it's going to be a lot easier to support from a cso the cio or from the cio the, the cso if you understand the, the, the pressures um, that you're under. The shared risk piece is interesting, isn't it? Because I think there has been a perception historically that the CISO will take the, the hit in a way, and we know that I think the average duration of the CISO is about 18 months. So I guess that is important, isn't it? There's that collaboration and you almost go together whether you win or fail. Yeah, I completely agree. I think the average duration for a CIO is about three and a half years, so we don't, we don't make it much further. Um, no, I agree that that risk is shared, absolutely. I mean, going back to reporting lines, people can get hung up on that. And, and yeah, my view is yeah, you can have hard lines, you can have dotted lines. In the end, the CISO is the right person to be representing security to the board. How would you have a CISO with a completely independent reporting line owning that risk when the CIO still has to deliver most of the actions that kind of meet that risk? It is quite complicated. I think the best thing is just to have that common purpose. Absolutely. I mean, you can have your you'll have your separate silos in any company with regards to what they're doing, be it in finance or HR or whatever. But so many of the things that the CIO or the CISO does um, cross all of those barriers that it's just inefficient to do those separately. And there are points where they just have to join together. There is, why have a separate team that's worrying about patching all of your devices, but then you've got a network team that's just gonna worry about patching their network devices. There should be one team that, that's managing that across the board. Now there is no option with, even with the CIO team or maybe CIO team member, or maybe no option with the CISO team member that, you know, they have to be, you know, uh, close skills, you know, enabler now. I mean, if you will see security is one area that even IT guy need to know and at least understand all basics that what needs to be done. In the same way, I think, uh, you know, the collaboration with the team is very much required. You know, one example I can call that, you know, most of the time, whenever we achieve something, you know, I'm the CISO, we actually take, you know, our CIO team, you know, just a, you know, team collaboration point, but we do the party, a success party together because they are the one who is implementing this on the ground. We are more on our policy making, you know, tell them these all are the rules which need to be applied in your MDM. But at the end of the day, they are the one who is managing, implementing. And, you know, so I think this definitely this collaboration required and definitely there is a cross skill learning with each other, which is, uh, you know, very important to achieve uh, common goals. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, it's not just the CISO, it's the CIO. It's, it's all of tech yeah. because customers always want stuff. They don't really care how it's done. They don't really want to pay for it. They don't really care about security. So, I mean, the line is absolutely everyone needs to be invested in it. Um, I think probably a useful way of doing it, which, which it's stating the completely obvious, but we've also failed to do it in IT quite a lot, which is what are our customers experiencing, right? It's that whole UX, CX thing. And if I look back on the last 15 years, as we really started professionalize how we do cybersecurity and information security, I think there were kind of multiple phases. The first phase, we threw in just bucket loads of tools because we all realized we had these enormous risks and so got the funding, just threw money at it. And that was a bit clunky and we didn't really think, and we didn't really think how the experience of using those tools interacted with the experience of using the rest of the productivity suites and the applications. And so you end up, if you sit back and say, right, a completely non-technical person out there, you know, on the factory floor or in an office somewhere, how are they experiencing this? 
is quite a revelation when you think, that's oh, not really all that great. It's like, why are they being prompted to do two-factor authentication every, every couple of hours? I mean, that's probably wrong configuration, but people are sensitive to this stuff. And then it comes back to, if you want people to behave the right way, you've got to make it easy for them, and ideally make it quite enjoyable. So I think that addresses a large part of it. I think there are a lot of things where we can collaborate. Uh, the security by design is something which we can share as a practice from CISO to CIOs. And uh, the business perspective is really important from all the CISOs to keep in mind while we are talking about uh, what exactly we are trying to secure. So end user experience, uh, ensuring the availability of the data and protecting the right data in terms of the right classification. So these are the key factors I think we can share between both the organization, between CIO and CISOs. I think I uh, agree with uh, Anuj, end user experience, which is very important because sometimes it happens when you are actually planning some new security controls and, you know, it may interrupt, you know, our uh, BAU, business as usual mode, because, you know, every security control at least, you know, disrupts some way of business and maybe user will not accept this change management easily. I think CIO collaboration, CIO function calibration can really help us to actually uh, the right way of communication to both function, to end users, to board, to management, what we're trying to achieve and especially how this journey will help us to secure our organization more. Another, I think, very relevant example, I agree with security by design. I think one area, awareness, which, you know, we even tried in our organization where CIO and CISO function both. We run an awareness campaign on end user security when people, uh, you know, at the time of COVID, when people 100% workforce has been moved to home, then ensuring, you know, what old guidelines should people follow while they are working from home, their, their laptop security, managing DLP, and, you know, your end user security. I think that time, I also felt that when we are working together in a more collaboration mode, I think things are definitely easy and uh, easy as well as a good user experience as well. So awareness is one area definitely I found if both will work together that can actually do wonders. So th there's obviously collaboration to be had there and obviously there's obviously a lot to be learned from what's the objectives that they're trying to deliver and obviously there's that point where in the middle that meets, right? So well, you can have those common goals, common objectives. Um, but at the same time, I guess there's a skill set um, element to be um, mindful of as well, right? Like, not everyone's going to be able to um, be an expert on both sides of it, right? So there, there will be the SecOps, there will be the NetOps, they will continue, but it's all about how we can deliver convergence between them in terms of the common goals and common objectives. Um, and obviously, when you think about what we can deliver for our organization that we work for, by having that collaborate together, there is a much bigger view of what's going on in the organization or those different tools that you're sharing. There's a lot more efficiency that could be delivered to the organization as part of all that.